Well, the rest of us, let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 33 and I'll read verse 6. Isaiah 33 verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Now we're looking at the names of God. And Isaiah 33 verse 6 is a foundation scripture where the prophet talks about how God's wisdom and knowledge of God's word shall be the stability of our times here. And I began to show you that the wisdom and the knowledge of God is revealed to you and me through many ways. But one of the ways is through the word and that is why the word is always important. So God's wisdom and knowledge is revealed in the word. And in the word, God reveals his names and through the names he reveals his characteristics. That means who he really is and who he wants to be in your life and my life. See, because... I told you people have a distorted image about God. They have a wrong image. Sin has marred the image of God. So that is why God has to reveal himself through the word so that you have a right image about God. In fact, Jesus coming to the earth was that purpose, for that purpose. Not just to be the savior and all those things. All those things are there. But one of the things is to reveal God. What is God? Who is he like? Is he good or is he bad? That is why he came to reveal the Father. So we looked at the names of God and God reveals who he is there. He wants us to know who he really is, have the right image about him and uh, the right picture about him. So we went to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 where the very first verse of the Bible it says, In the beginning, God. So I told you that word God in the Hebrew is translated as Elohim. And Elohim is a very rich word, significant in meaning. It has in-depth meaning there. We looked at the various aspects of that name. Uh, but right now we are looking at Elohim in connection with the God of covenants or eternal agreements. That is what we are looking at. Elohim means the God of covenants. The God who makes covenants with his creation and makes eternal agreements with his creation. It's wonderful because... God created the human race and did not leave them or forsake them. No, he comes and he makes covenants with them. And through those covenants, he reveals what he wants to do for them. That is why the covenants are so important. So I began to show you in the book of Genesis, we have four important covenants. They are vital because <coughs> those covenants are made with man at different, uh, different periods of time there together with man. And through that, God reveals is character through man in those covenants there. So in Genesis, we have four vital covenants there. The first one is called the Edenic covenant in the Garden of Eden, where God created everything that man would need. And last, God created man and put him in the garden and therefore showing man that he is the one who provides for all the basic needs of man. So that's a lesson there. If you have any needs, don't look anywhere else. Don't look to anyone. Don't look to human beings. <laughs> Don't look to man for help. Look to God. Because he is the one who provides all your basic needs. So that is the first lesson we see through the Edenic covenant. Second, we have the Adamic covenant. Remember God created Adam. He, he told him only one thing. He says, of all the trees you can partake except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you partake, you will die. Die means... You will, you will become sin. You will be separated from me spiritually and then physically and then forever, eternity, you will be separated from me. But Adam sinned against God. He disobeyed God. He partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But then we see the moment he sinned, God coming into the garden of Eden, calling out to Adam. God didn't abandon him. God didn't leave him or forsake him and told him, you know, I told you not to eat it. I told you the consequences, what will happen, but you disobeyed, now suffer it. No, no, he didn't say that. He came calling out to Adam as the seeking savior to redeem Adam. And he takes an animal there, kills it, and takes the coat wet with blood and covers him. Therefore showing that he is a redeeming God. In Genesis 3.15, God promised a redeemer. He says, this is just a temporary measure. But I will send a redeemer who will shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And whoever puts his faith on that blood there that is shed will be redeemed. So that's the second covenant. Third is the covenant that he established with Noah called the Noah covenant. You know, Noah was living in a generation where it was evil, corrupt and wicked. And, and God was grieved and vexed. And he had to destroy man. 
but then if he destroys everyone he cannot work out his plans and purposes so he had to preserve noah he makes a covenant with noah tells him to build an ark there and he's going to destroy mankind so he commands noah to take his wife and his children and their wives and a pair of everything that has life into the ark 40 days and 40 nights he's going to send for rain there he told noah noah did exactly and we see here god preserving life and making a covenant with noah and promising him that he'll never again destroy the earth with flood and even today he gives us a sign the sign of the bow in the sky the rainbow that is a sign that speaks to you and me also today that he is always faithful to his promise so that is the third covenant there fourthly we began to look at the abraham card abrahamic covenant this is a very important covenant and i began to show you that through the abrahamic covenant god was going to raise up a new breed of people or a new race of people called the jews and they were going to be his chosen line he is going to bless them and through them bless the entire nations so that is why the covenant with abraham was very special so we went to genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3 i told you god comes to abraham see man doesn't go it is god who comes to man and god tells abraham in verses 1 to 3 he says i will bless you i will make your name great among the nations and i will bless all those who bless you i will you know curse everyone that curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed amazing promises god comes to abraham and gives him there in genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 there but then god tells abraham because he was chosen for a special work there god tells him to do three things one is he says leave your family leave your country first then he says leave all your relatives don't take anyone with you and go to the land which i will show you and then i showed you how abraham obeyed only two commands he didn't obey one <laughs> he left his country he went to a land that god was showing him but he made the mistake he disobeyed god when he took his relatives especially he took lot and because of that i showed you there was a delay in abraham entering the promised land at least two years delay minimum if you read in between verses you will know that a delay not only a delay but also a strife between abraham and lot because of the shepherds both of them were blessed abraham was blessed abundantly and lot also was blessed because he was with abraham abundantly in sheep in oxen in cattle in every single thing the bible says there that the land could not bear those blessings and the shepherds who were taking care of you know the sheep abraham shepherd and lot shepherd they had some strife and some disagreements and quarreling and because of that abraham and lot also had some strife and thing there and then finally abraham exercises his godly qualities and he says let's not fight after all we are relatives so let's not fight we are brothers he says and he says look at the land before us you choose i give you the first choice first preference you choose if you chose the right i will take the left if you chose the left i will take the right now i tr- i showed you all these things last week i spoke to you many people think that abraham was a fool no no he was not a fool by giving the first choice to lot in fact he was trusting god he believed god's promise and that is why he told lot you chose abraham knew if god was with him then god will bless him god promised that god will bless him so it did not matter which piece of land he took or which piece of land lot gave him it did not matter because no matter what piece of land lot gave abraham Abraham will prosper and flourish because of God's promise. He knew that and that is why he gives Lot the first choice. And you know Lot cunning, smart, <laughs> he makes the best choice. He chooses the best land. He looks at the land, he looks at this side and that side and he says, "Well, this land has lot of rivers, lot of water. It is fertile, so I will prosper here." And he chose the good portion. Abraham says, "Fine, no problem. I can take any portion. I will prosper in that." So that is what we see in here. Now come down to Genesis chapter 13. Let's go there for a moment. Genesis chapter 13.
verse 14 and the lord said to abraham after lot had separated from him <laughs> it's an amazing verse here in verse 14 the lord said to abraham here after lot had separated from him lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are north south east and west and then he says for all the land which you see i give to you and your descendants forever i'll just stay with that for a moment <laughs> There's something very important that God is telling Abraham here. But just pay attention to that verse it says there. When Lot was separated from Abraham, then God spoke to him. What do we see here? Why this is important? Well, it's an important principle for you and me to learn here. From, I told you Abraham's life is a wonderful life and we learn from their lives. So that we will not commit the same mistakes that they committed in life there. We learn from them the good things there. So what is God teaching here? As soon as they had a strife and Lot and Abraham were separated. As the moment immediately, the moment they were separated. God comes and speaks to Abraham and says now lift up your eyes and look north, south, east and west. And as far as you can see, I'll give you all the land to you and your descendants. <laughs> the moment he was separated, Lot was separated from him, God comes and speaks to him. What is the problem here? Why God did not speak to him before while Lot was with him and tell him, look at the land and I will give it to you. Well, the reason is this. As long as Abraham put his faith and trust in Lot, as long as he put his, uh, his trust in Lot there. He was attached to them instead of putting faith in God. See, God was the one who came to him. God told he will bless him. God said he will multiply his descendants. God promised all these things. So instead of putting his faith upon God's promise, remember, Abraham was struggling with God's promise, especially concerning descendants. <laughs> I mean, in the other things, he believed God. He believed God that he will prosper him financially and all those things. But when it came to blessing him and giving him children, he struggled with that. He struggled with unbelief. So God had to teach him. Remember, he is a heathen person. He did not know the living God. So God came to him. God gave him all this wonderful vision there and blessings there. But now God had to teach him faith because unless he fully obeyed and trusted God's promise, God can fulfill whatever he promised. If he did not obey and, and trust and have faith in the promise of God, then God will never be able to accomplish his promises through him. So God had to teach him faith just like you and me. We put our faith in Christ, we are born again, we become children of God. But then after becoming a child of God, we have to learn how to trust and put our faith in God's word whatever he promised and whatever he said we got to learn it every day we learn how to trust him and trust his word and unless we put our faith in his word and his promise he cannot do anything for us so God had to teach Abraham how to put him first to to believe his word believe his promise there so as long as Abraham's eyes was upon Lot <laughs> you know he, he was struggling with this he could not believe that God will give him children. He had a problem with that. He found it difficult to believe that aspect of the promise there. And I told you that is why he was playing safe and he took Lot together. Why? In case God did not keep up his word, God did not keep his promise, then Abraham could raise up Lot after Lot was his own nephew. Raise him up as a son and give him, make him the heir of all his property and everything. That is why he took Lot there. But as long as he put his faith and trust in Lot. As long as he was attached to the family and relatives there, his hopes were upon Lot there. God could not reveal the next step or the next plan that he had for Abraham. And that is why as soon as Lot was separated from him, God comes immediately and now tells Abraham, lift up your eyes and look northward, southward, eastward, westward. And I'll give you all the land as far as you see to you and your descendants. I will give it. What is God teaching here? What is he teaching Abraham? And what is God teaching you and me here? Well, I believe that God is teaching us an important principle. <laughs> what is a principle? 
it is this as long as you put your faith and your trust in your family as long as you trust your relatives as long as you put your faith and your trust in your work in your business <laughs> as long as you put your faith and trust in all these things god cannot take you to the next step he cannot reveal the next step that he has for you in your life this is what we see here as long as abraham was trusting lot because this is what he was thinking if god did not keep his promise i'll take lot he'll be my heir so as long as we keep looking to our relatives you keep looking to your family putting your trust and your faith in your family that means loving your family loving your relatives loving your work loving your business loving children more than god as long as you do that it god cannot reveal his plans and purposes to you because if you love all these things more than god how can god trust you and how can he fulfill his plans and purposes through your life and that is why until lot was separated god did not reveal it to abraham as long as he was attached to lot god knew even if he told him he will not do it because he is attached to lot he is looking to lot he is still trusting in lot even today it is same as long as you and me put our faith our trust or as long as you and me love family above god love our work our business above god love children above god then it is difficult when we are attached to these things more than god then it is difficult for god to reveal all his plans and purposes that he has for our life because he wants a hundred percent he demands a hundred percent so that is what he was teaching abraham here so husbands yes love your wives but not more than god god needs to be first in everything parents love your children but not more than god children love your parents but not more than god see some people they love their work they love their business more than god that is exactly what god is teaching here when you love something more than god then god cannot reveal his plan and purpose for your life because you are so caught up with that particular thing that you are doing there you are focused on that even if god tells you you'll never do it you'll never do it working is good <laughs> everything is good but the thing is i'm talking about loving wife or loving husband loving children or children loving parents or studies and work and business more than god that is what i'm talking about when you put something else before god when god becomes secondary then god cannot reveal to you because if he reveals you will not do it you will not fulfill it you are so caught up with this particular thing that you will not even pay attention if god speaks to you and that is why god had to wait until lot was separated from abraham because abraham was attached to lot he was focusing upon lot trusting lot believing lot more than god's word so the moment he separated lot separated god comes now because he knows that abraham will now listen he knows that so long abraham was giving importance to lot but now god knows he will listen so god comes to uh, lot and uh, god comes to abraham and tells him there lift up your eyes and look towards north south east and west and as far as your eyes can see i will give you all the land see even today we i know many people even believers they put everything else first they love everything else first more than god some of them love their business love their work yeah? they say well i have no time for god <laughs> i'm so i'm so caught up in business in work i know people who are just focused up on work there focused up on business yeah? there are people who love the family more sometimes husbands they love the family sometimes the wives they love the family and they put god secondary children yeah. parents love the children sometimes more than god i've seen it <laughs> so that is exactly what god is teaching here you should not love anyone or anything more than god god demands 100% of your total being 
then only he will reveal to you his plans and purposes if you put anything else above god more than god then it's difficult for you to even listen if god speaks because you love something and whatever you love you will give your energy your strength and everything you will give to that so even if god speaks you will not listen you will not know you will never fulfill it you never do it there now this is thought all over the scriptures turn with me to deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 It says that thou shall love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart all of thy strength and all of thy soul mind heart mind and strength thou shall love the Lord thy God with all just circle that word all pay attention all what is he talking about that means he is demanding 100% of you if you love him you love him 100% with all of your heart with all of your mind with all of your strength that means he wants undivided love total love in other words he's saying if you want to love me you better love me 100% if not don't love me at all <laughs> i want your 100% that's what he's saying here thou shall love the lord thy god with all of thy heart that means he should matter more to you he should be first he should have the most important in your life you should be the most important thing in your life not anything else everything else is secondary god should be first whether it is studies you know sometimes children don't understand it <laughs> they spend hours and hours and hours of study and they need like god you know what i say you spend some time with god studies become easier hello <laughs> are you listening you don't have to work so hard and study so hard and toil so hard you just spend some time with god first love god first put him first give him his due his honor first and then your studies become easy become simple by the grace of god and the blessing of god you will study well and you will excel same thing is work <laughs> a lot of people work so hard they neglect god i say well you put work secondary first spend time with god business people spend time with god love god first put him first don't put your business first when you do that work becomes easy business becomes easy everything else becomes easy this is the secret for success love god put him first let him have the first priority in your life so this is what is talking about thou shall love the lord thy god with all thy heart all thy strength and all thy soul it doesn't say well you tried and you gain 90% it doesn't matter <laughs> lo not even 99% he demands 100% that is why he says all all love me with all of your heart all of your mind and all of your strength let's turn to matthew chapter 10 i'll read one more scripture Matthew <coughs> chapter 10 verse 37 You know some scriptures will shock people in the bible if you don't understand it the right way <laughs> He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me Hello first is talking about children <laughs> He who loves father or mother more than me god see god should be first he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me now why you should love god more than your mother and father because it is god who has given you a good mother and father <laughs> hello <laughs> that's why i love him he has blessed you with good parents so first love him i'm not saying don't love your parents hello get me right 
i always told you you know you can talk whatever you want but i cannot talk whatever i want because 100 people are waiting a thousand people are waiting for one mistake to catch hold of that <laughs> so i have to be very clear and very profound in what i say from the pulpit here and that is why i had to spend so much of time thinking about what i need to say and say things rightly not just carelessly you know some people use the pulpit such a careless manner they'll just come and blabber something here <laughs> Jesus if you read that carefully he's not saying don't love your father and mother he's not teaching that because if you read the 10 commandments he says the first thing is love god and the second is love your parents honor your father and mother it will be well with you you'll have long life it'll you'll be blessed by that if you honor your parents then so he's not saying not to love your parents not to honor them he's saying don't honor them or don't love them more than me put me first i should be first because i am the one who has blessed you with good parents <laughs> and as long as you love god first i'll tell you you will love your parents also you will appreciate your parents if you don't love god then you will not appreciate your parents you will not love your parents so that is why he says he who honors father and mother more than me is not worthy see when a person loves god then he will love parents he will love people he will love people if he loves to god then he also says he who loves son or daughter more than me you know there are parents who love their children more than god <laughs> hello <laughs> so fond of the children that is what he's saying he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me why because god is the one who blessed you with that wonderful child <laughs> children are a gift from god so don't love them more god is the one who gave you children look to him trust him trust him he is the one who blessed you with children so love him thank him praise him worship him for that so that is what is talking about here it's not talking about should not honor your parents or should not love no no it's not teaching that saying don't love them more than me love me first put me first and when god is first whether it it is in a relationship between husband and wife or whether it is a relationship between parents and children or between studies and work and your business in everything when god is first when he has a number one priority in your life then i will tell you everything else will be in order in your home in your life Are you listening in god is first you don't have to worry about your children you don't have to worry about your work and your business everything will be in order when you honor god and when you love god with all of your heart all of your mind and all of your strength then god will honor you he will love you and he will bless you and he will take care of everything that you do that is why he says put me first trust me first okay let's come back to genesis chapter 13 verse 14 so we see here that god comes to abraham the moment lot is separated from him and tells him to lift up his eyes and look to look as far as he can see to the north south east and west and that god will give him all the land and to his descendants now why god tells abraham to lift up his eyes and to look and to see in other words he is saying look at the land and see see north south east and west so god is telling abraham something see the land get up and look at the land look north south east and west so my question is why god is telling abraham to now look look means see see all the land arise and see as far as you can see north south east and west i will give you so why is god telling abraham to see the land in other words this is what happened when god, when abraham got up and he began to see the land or when he began to see what god was telling him there god was giving abraham a vision of what god had in store for abraham's life that is what he was saying 
look at the land and see in other words god was telling abraham i want you to see what i have for you so rise and look this is what i have for you look at it get a vision of it get a glimpse of what i have in store for you see it was not until lot was separated that god comes and tells him this so that that is what god tells him see so when abraham saw the land in other words god was giving him a vision or what god was going to do for abraham he was going to give him the land as far as his eyes could see not south east and west so that is what we see here god had to give abraham a vision here but then the thing is this just giving him a vision would not be sufficient <laughs> god was teaching him faith he had to learn faith so how to teach him faith so that is why god says look at the land arise and look at the land as far as you see i will give it to you so what god was teaching him there in other words every time he looked at the land god was teaching him how to keep looking at the promises of god so when abraham looked at the land he was reminded of the promise of god see before what he was doing he was looking at lot <laughs> his nephew and as long as he was looking at lot god could not fulfill his plans and his purposes for him so now he says look at the land don't put your eyes on lot lot is no more with you so put your eyes on the land why the land because every time abraham looked at the land he lifted up his eyes and he saw the land he was reminded of the promise of god that god told him that god will give him this land as far as he could see not south east and west to him and his descendants so every time abraham looked at the land he was reminded of the promise of god so he kept looking he was reminded of the promise you know what it's a principle the more you look at the promise of god the more you begin to believe god and his word are you getting it the more you look at the promise of god the more you believe it the more it becomes real to you the more easier it becomes for god to fulfill his promise in your life the moment you take your eyes of god's word and put it on the problem finished you are like peter you will be sinking <laughs> hello you remember that incident jesus came walking on the water first they thought it was a ghost then peter says bid me to walk on the water and jesus says come and he started to walk on the water yes or no did he walk yes he walked as long as his eyes were on jesus he kept walking on the water but then you know what happened he turned and he focused upon the waves and the wind and the bible says he began sinking it's a principle the more you focus on the promise of god the more your faith is built up the more the promise of god becomes real to you you don't doubt about it but you take your eyes off the promise of god and you focus it upon the problem you begin to doubt you begin to fear that is what was happening to abraham he was going on looking at lot and as long as he was looking at lot he was doubting the promise of god so lot was separated now god is giving him something else here giving him a vision here look at the land and every time abraham looked at the land he was reminded of god's promise In other words the more he was reminded of it the more he believed it <laughs> but then that's not enough <laughs> eh? just to have the promise before you and to have a vision is not enough that is why I come down to verse 17 let's come for a moment to verse 17 now abraham uh, god says to abraham arise and walk to the length and the breadth of the land first he gives him a vision why a vision so that every time he looks at the land he'll remember god's promise now he says arise and walk the length and the breadth of the land so why does god tell him to walk the length and the breadth of the land 
in other words this is what god was saying it's not enough to have a vision just to sit down at home dream and vision have a vision about something great it's not enough why arise and walk in other words god was teaching abraham that it's not enough to have a vision but he needs to do something about that vision god gave him a vision god gave him a promise but it is he who needs to claim that promise and see that that promise is manifested in life he has to do it not god god can only give you a promise but you need to claim it god can give you a vision it is you that bring it to pass with his help i'm not talking about without his help with his help it is you that make it happen so this is what god was teaching abraham it's not enough to have a vision you have to do something you have to act upon the promise of god you have to act upon the vision that god gives you you got to live with it every day that means every day this vision has to be before you you have to believe it you have to act upon it you have to do something towards that vision for god to fulfill that vision in your life that is what god was teaching abraham here <laughs> So that is why he says don't just sit down there and eat sleep and just dream about the land no no get up arise and walk the length and the breadth of the land he says <laughs> walk that means do something about it don't just keep believing act upon what you believe a lot of people keep believing the promises of god hello and i tell you my friend just by believing the promises of god it will never come to pass in your life <laughs> you got to act upon the promise believing is good that's the first step but you got to act upon it you got to live with the promise you got to live with the vision every day so vision is good but you got to act upon it you know a lot of people never have a vision for life <laughs> even believers they just live their lives you know 60 70 80 years and then when they come to the end of the life they never accomplished anything in life anything special or anything grand or great they never achieved anything in life they just lived a normal life that anyone would live why because they don't have a vision of what they need to achieve and accomplish in life You know what will happen if you don't have a vision it is an aimless life You need to have a vision to live for it and do something for it If you don't have a vision you live an aimless life you'll never achieve and accomplish anything in life A lot of people live without a vision there They get caught up in the vicious cycle of life This is what happens to many people you know it's a routine life life as its regular wishes routine for everybody that means <laughs> every morning we get up we take a shower have breakfast go to our work come back have tea coffee or whatever it is a dinner watch tv a little while go back to sleep <laughs> this is the cycle of life this is what we do routine every day you know what will happen you keep doing it day after day one day it's okay but you do it one day and then you do it one year and two years and you keep doing it there you know what happens there you will get sick and tired of living you will get sick and tired of living i mean every day same old thing get up take a shower eat breakfast go to work come back have dinner watch tv go to sleep no purpose no vision you don't have anything to accomplish in life nothing to achieve in life life will be bored no ever find life exciting and thrilling because you have nothing to live for no vision nothing to accomplish nothing to reach out for nothing so naturally you'll be bored you know i say such people are just existing in the world they're not living so a lot of people are just existing there they don't live to have a vision means to live and life means is to be vibrant you see a person who has life he's vibrant he's active he's full of energy full of power why because he has something to achieve and accomplish in life a lot of people don't have a vision for life they don't know what they want to achieve don't know what what they want to accomplish in life 
same old routine vicious cycle you know i had a colleague and this is what he said he was around i think at that time i, I think around 60 years old so he said well every day same old food same old house and then he said one thing <laughs> same old wife <laughs> in tamil he said adhe saapade adhe veedu adhe pondaadi i mean here is a man who is 60 years old no vision no purpose here and after 60 years this is what he saying same old food <laughs> same old house same old wife nothing to accomplish nothing to achieve this is what will happen when you don't have a vision for life young people who are hearing it god bless you <laughs> if you just get a vision it will change the way you live every day every day i mean you just look out in the news look at it look out at the secular world they are people without god but they understand the principles of god young people 13 years old 14 years old 16 years old achieving great things in life even at the age of 13 why because they have a vision to accomplish something and because of the vision they devote all their time all their strength all their energy towards that and with the help of god they are blessed and they are prospered and they achieve great things every day it's happening then why can't you and me who are children of god hello who have and serve a mighty god why can't we achieve great things we don't achieve it because we don't have a vision there are other people who have a vision but they don't do anything about it <laughs> they just eat sleep and wish that the vision will come to pass you know what i call that i call that wishful thinking wishful thinking i would say is at least good because you are thinking something positive not negative it's better than negative thinking <laughs> but the problem with visual thinking is there's no guarantee that it will happen but the promise of god is guaranteed hello it will happen when you start looking at the promises of god and believing it that that will happen there is no guarantee there so that is what god is teaching abram it's not enough just to have a vision and to sit at home and dream and wish that this will happen no no god told him arise and walk the length and the breadth and as far as you walk those every step that you take the sole of your feet treads upon the ground i will give to you to possess the land god told him that so this is what i think abraham must have done every day he would have got up and he would have walked the length and the breadth of the land <laughs> every day walking and all the people around must be thinking abraham's gone nuts <laughs> all of a sudden this old man is getting up and he's jogging <laughs> what is he doing he's jogging one day he's going the length ways another day he's jogging breadth ways what is gone wrong with this man but you know what it didn't matter to abraham god told him to do it he simply obeyed he learned how to trust and obey god he learned to do it he was learning by faith he was learning faith and has he kept walking or jogging the length and the breadth of the land and this is what he was saying this land belongs to me it is for me and my descendants so every place that he walked upon the length and the breadth he was saying it is mine it is for me and my descendants he was saying it what is the principle in other words he was claiming the promise of god see it's not enough to have the promises you got to claim it until it becomes real in your life if the promises of god come upon your life and my life automatically then i would say every christian person must be blessed must be healed must be prosperous and must be in the top isn't it <laughs> i mean that's logic but it never comes upon you automatically god gives you the promise but you have to take it and claim it and believe it and act upon it and see that the promise is fulfilled in your life some people have this idea that god will do everything for them it may sound very nice my friend <laughs> may sound very spiritual but you know something god will not do anything for you because he has already done everything for you on the cross of calvary and that is why he said it is finished whatever he needs to do for your victory and my victory your success and my success he has done it accomplished it and that is why he says it is finished now you have to do what he has told you to do and you got to take the promises there believe it act upon it 
proclaim it until it is manifested in your life you got to do it that is what god was teaching abraham look at the land and then walk the length and the breadth of it so as he was doing it he was saying well this is mine it belongs to me and my descendants well what happened after that next week we'll talk about it because that's very interesting <laughs> that's the interesting part because a lot of people will think well if you just claim the promise god has given you a vision and god has given you a promise and you claim it just like that it will happen you think that but come next week i will show you what happened <laughs> shall we all stand but i tell you my friend god has amazing blessings for you and me say abraham is just an example i told you he was a heathen god came to him promised him mind blowing blessings his mind could not understand it <laughs> and he does the same to you and me also you and me also were aliens strangers outside the covenant and pro- but god came to you and me chose us for what for astounding blessings the bible says that no mind has ever imagined no heart has ever conceived no eye has ever seen no ear has ever heard the great and the glorious things that god has prepared for all those who love him if you love him god has amazing things for you in your life he has planned amazing blessings blessing that you cannot even imagine with your mind amazing and that is why the next verse paul says that is why he has given us the holy spirit why to show these blessings to open up our eyes of understanding that we may see the glorious things that god has in store for us i tell you my friend it doesn't matter what level of life you are in now i tell you god has much more than what you have amen he has much more for you remember he is a great god he is a mighty god and he created you for greatness he created you for greatness so don't be content with what you have and what you possess no no you were not born for that you were born for much more than that are you getting it you were born for much more than that you were born for greatness you were born to achieve something great and glorious that is why i like that prayer in jabez i'll never forget it <laughs> i told you that prayer is a prayer where you have to pray all all your life jabez was blessed to a certain extent but he was wise enough to know that god did not create him just for little blessings <laughs> he was wise enough to know that he was created for great things for god and that is why he prayed oh god i pray that you'll take what i have bless it multiply it and enlarge my territory that means make it more a wonderful prayer <laughs> believe god my friend is a great god he has created you for greatness he has created you for abundance i always say this when you ask god he doesn't give you according to your need that's what paul says see paul understands god <laughs> he says my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory that is in christ jesus if you have a need and you go to god he doesn't give you according to your need no no he gives according to his riches it's like this you want food or you want a little money and let's say you go to the king and you ask him i just want food for today i'm dying starving give me little food or give me little money you think the king will just give you little food and little money hello no he will give you according to his status not according to what you want you may say give me little money no no he will give because he is a king and that's what a king is about he will give you liberally more than enough he'll give you if he can do that and how much more how a god who is the king of all kings amen So believe for more don't be satisfied and content with whichever level of life you are you may be blessed i'm not saying no but that is not the level that god has for you god has much more than that and believe the best be the best achieve the greatest in life shall we just thank god for his word oh we just thank you father thank you thank you jesus father god we just worship you oh god truly you are a wonderful god such a marvelous god a wonder working god a loving and a caring god and a good god our father thank you thank you lord thank you for once again speaking to us this morning oh father especially revealing to us that you are a god 
who keeps your covenants and your promises towards us for a thousand generations oh god thank you father thank you for all the precious promises that you've given us oh god and i pray for people today oh god that they will go to these promises believe it act upon it oh god claim it and experience it in their lives oh god you have amazing blessings for us oh god for each and every one of us oh god and i pray that as they do it that all the blessings will come upon them and overtake them oh god i pray that the lives of people will be changed and transformed that people will never be the same again and i pray that everyone will know oh god that they were born for greatness born to achieve something great in this life oh god yes for and with your help i pray that they will achieve that oh god in the name of jesus oh god that whatever they want to achieve whatever they dream whatever they envision i pray with your help it will come to pass because that is what they were born for oh god pray for every single person to be victorious to be successful to achieve great things in life oh god so that your name can be glorified through us in jesus name i pray